And welcome everyone to the first edition of the Movie Club. I'm your host, my name is Adam, and we're going to go over a couple of movies I just saw recently this summer, and we'll go over everything in terms of what I think about the movie, the concept of the movie. If you haven't seen any of these movies yet, especially Blue Beetle, I'm not going to really blow it for some people. It just recently came out towards the end of this month, so I don't want to go in too much into it. But movies I will be essentially going, so spoilers alerts, will be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. I'll be talking about Transformer Rise of the Beast, The Flash. Um, so let's get into the first movie I actually saw this summer, and that was The Flash. Uh, there'll be some people coming in and down, up and down stairs of my my house. My my oldest right there had a summer party, so to speak. A bunch of buddies coming and whatnot. So going back to the scene. So the first movie I saw in theaters was The Flash. I don't know where the hate comes from. It. I liked it. I liked the fact that they used the um, the Flashpoint paradox storyline from the DC Comics and animated series as kind of like a uh, blueprint of how how they wanted to do it. Um, I know as um, Miller, the acting played the Flash. A lot of people didn't like him due to other things. I like the fact that Ben Affleck came back. It was interesting. Uh, Wonder Woman was also in it. Uh, brief cameo appearance. And then you also have the return of Michael Keaton, which, by the way, that's one of the reasons why I went and saw it. I'm a big Michael Keaton fan. I was a big Batman, Batman Returns fan. That was my Batman before you know Christian Bale came onto the scene. So, with that being said, the story was good. Um, some people were complaining about the CGI. I kind of see where people had an issue with it, which I don't know what's going on with, C with CGI recently. I have a feeling that because um, studios are, are, are too busy trying to pump things out as fast as they can, they don't realize how it affects the quality of their films. And I'm going to just be 100% honest with you. When I watched it, didn't hate it. I actually loved I actually liked it a lot. I, I think Michael Keaton did a really good job for his return as Batman. Um, I felt the way he went out, mm, I mean, if that was Michael Keaton's swan sh song as Batman, I appreciated it. However, this is my little bit of a pet peeve I have with the film is I feel they should have stuck with the actual source material of the Flashpoint Paradox. I think it would have made it 20 times better. Um, CGI, this film should have took, as, as how long it took to get it out, they should have went back and cleaned up a lot of the CGI work. Um, acting was, you know, minimum for what a DC is. Um, however, I do like Michael Keaton's acting. I hated the fact that they brought George Clooney back for a cameo. Um, I do, if you watch the end of the film, Aquaman makes an appearance, which was great. I like Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Um, and all, all, if I was going to rate this movie um, one through ten, it would be a five because the film was the film was good for me. Um, it was good for the for the, the emotions. The pace of the film had its moments where it was like really good, dropped really good, then drop again. Um, Michael Keaton's performance alone said 10 out of 10. Miller's performance as the Flash for this one. I didn't for say like him too much in Justice League. Um, not going to lie, I think his character in Justice League was not really the best. However, for his lone standalone film, he did really well for someone who... A lot of people were boycotting sort of, of, of the movie. Once again, 5 out of 10. Let's go to Transformers, Rise of the Beast. Beast is whatever they want to, how they pronounce it. One of the best Transformer movies since the Bumblebee. Now, I watch all of them. I'm a diehard Generation 1 Transformer fan. I, I'm also a diehard Beast Board fan. I watched all the series, cartoons, comics, you name it. Got all. I used to have all the action figures. I was that guy. How do I feel about the movie? 10 out of 10. I'll tell you why. Bumblebee was the the catalyst to essentially ju um, to resurrect what was the Transformer film. 
uh, f- film franchise. Um, after Dark Side of the Moon, it kind of just went. You ever heard the term, you know, jump the shark, nuke the fridge? That's essentially what it was. Um, Mike, Mark Wahlberg couldn't save the fuck out of that Transformer franchise. Bumblebee saved it. So after the, the really how popular the, the Bumblebee movie was and the the designs for the characters were so close to the gener- the G1's uh, generation is why they went for that look for the new the, the most newest Transformers. I At first, I... I like the, 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 I don't know what's going on with this lately. Um, there's a cartoon called Cyberverse where a lot of characters from Beast Wars and the, the original Gen 1, G1 uh, generation somehow cross paths a lot, which I don't think it's a bad idea. It's a, it's a really good concept. I like it. However, um, the ending with the G.I. Joes hinting a crossover universe is pretty sweet. Um, I don't know if you guys ever read the comics of the crossover between G.I. Joes and Transformers. It's really good. This is a very basic outline. I don't want to ruin the film too much for you guys. I like Pete Davidson a little bit too much. Pete Davidson. However, his character was perfect for what it was. His human counterpart to his character is what made it horrible for me. Between a 5 and a 10, I'm going to give it a 7. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking going to give it a 10 out of 10. People are going to disagree with that, and that's fine. I, That's fine. However, I like the story talent. I like the pace of the film. I like the the, the scenery. Of, I think it was Peru they were at. I'm not 100% positive. I can't really remember. However, it was really good. I don't hate it at all. I, It was good. It was a good globe-trotting experience. Once again, 10 out of 10, personally. Now, we're going to go to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Oh, man. My oldest son went and started with me, and so was my younger son. My younger son found it to be a little bit more entertaining. My oldest, who was going to turn 15, who grown up on the classic, you know, 87's cartoon, the 2003 and the 2012 cartoon, hated Rise of the Ninja Turtles series. So this was going to be a little bit one of those things where it was our generations, my generation, his generation, merged into what was considered what the Mayhem was supposed to be about. In terms of how I was expecting from Seth Rogen's version of it. Not exactly not that at all. Jackie Chan's Master Splinter was fucking phenomenal. Funny as shit. Loved it. Um, all the voice actors that were in it. Especially Post Malone as a ch- as, uh, Filet, Ray Filet was good. Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko was good. Um, John Cena. <laughs> John Cena's Rocksteady. And then Seth Rogen as Bebop. Not bad. Once again. Perfect voice acting casting across the board. The story, on the other hand, really out there. Ice Cube is super fly. Instead of having Baxter Stockman as the fly, he made a mutant fly. Okay, different. Um, though, I'm so used to like the original story. So when they remade the live action, they went away from the original elements of the Ninja Turtles. I have to keep reminding myself, this is not my Ninja Turtles. This is not the Ninja Turtles I've grown up with. It's a whole different type of Ninja Turtles. However, it just... It, listen, if it irked my oldest son, and my oldest son is not a gatekeeper at all. He doesn't like to gatekeep shit, but he gate... He gate shit... He, oh my god. He gatekeeped the shit out of it. He did not enjoy the film, which I was very surprised. I laughed at it. I enjoyed it. Regardless, it wasn't necessarily mine as turtles, but I enjoyed it. And the rating of it? My son's rating for the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. He gave it a fucking three. Uh, that told me that he did not enjoy it whatsoever. Not, not one bit. Couple of moments we laughed, but not me. On the other hand, I laughed too much. <laughs> Maybe because I guess 
maybe I, I get Seth Rogen's sense of humor because I'm like a permanent teenager at times myself. With that being said, I'm going to give it a five out of five. That's me, me being generous. I don't want to be that guy. They'd be like, ah, fuck this shit. You know, it's horrible. It's trash. No, I, I generally enjoyed it. However, I didn't like the, how the story was being told in terms of the, it, it didn't stick to the original source. I know Kevin Eastman was completely loved the idea, was totally for it, but different adaptations, I guess, pre the, the appreciation of the Ninja Turtles, the fact that it's been going for so long is, you know, speaks uh, speaks volume to uh, Kevin Eastman, Peter Lauren, uh, Jim Lawson, and all of them, who really put life into the Ninja Turtles. I've met them all in person before. They're really great people. So I don't have no ill feel of the original creators whatsoever. I think they've done an amazing job and kudos to them to make an accessible franchise of which is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Once again, five out of five for me, three out of 10 for my oldest. I think I'll let Hopefully you guys can drop a comment about what you thought about the Teenage Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. If you were in my age group and what you thought of it. Same thing with the Flash and the, new, the, the most recent Transformers. Let's go to the Blue Now let's uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about Blue Beetle. Ugh. People don't like it. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. I sat there. I laughed my ass off. It was really good. I liked it. Regardless that the actor who played McGill in Cobra Kai is Blue Beetle, and he did an amazing job. However, ooh, I can't pronounce the kid's name, and I feel so bad. I'm just going to call him McGill from Cobra Kai for now until I actually can say his name. His character from Cobra Kai went into Blue Beetle a lot, and I noticed that. And I think that was the biggest... It wasn't a pet peeve. I liked it. I liked seeing that he... It also makes him kind of a one-dimensional actor. Like, he can't separate the Cobra Kai character from... But then again, it depends how the Blue Beetle was written, how they done Jamie, which Jamie is, the, I think, either the second or third generation Blue Beetle from the original comics, which I'm a big Blue Beetle fan. So I know they had Ted Core as the first Blue Beetle. Then later on, they introduced Jamie, I think, and I'm not positive, there was a Blue Beetle in between Ted and the Jamie character, but I have to do my more research to go back to that. However, with that being said, the Blue Beetle movie was great. The main villain was good. The The story was good. The fucking, his family. Oh my God, George Lopez, his Uncle Rudy. Oh my God, he kills me. Oh, I could not stop laughing. I think George Lopez was was the center of attention for the majority of the film, um, which is not bad. Uh, they kept the, to what the Blue Beetle was supposed to be. Um, the, uh, if you guys haven't read the comics, the Jamie Re Reyes version of Blue Beetle, I would. It's a very much of a, a kid from a Mexican immigrant family who is trying to discover who he is. And it, it, it was a good film. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was one of the very few things that I enjoyed and I probably would never want to say anything bad about it. 10 out of 10. What would I score it? It's a 7. I'm going to say 7. Um, and I'll tell you why I'm going to say 7. DC lately has not been essentially striking home runs lately in their fil film franchises, with the exception of The Batman with Robert Pattinson, which I honestly thought was going to be bad, and that turned out to be fucking amazing. Primary language, I do swear a lot. It does say for kids. Honestly, when I click on these things, I just tap through them and I don't really look through shit. So, to be fair, it's a little bit. My these uh, welcome to the movie club is more for people in my generation or my age group. So, if there are some kids that watch it in their home with your parents and they hear me swear, I apologize. It is what it is. You know, uh, it is what it is. But going back to a saying, seven out of ten for Blue Beetle. I haven't seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse yet, which I, I'm hoping I'm going to see it soon. And if I do, I'm going to do a video on that. Um, just so you know, Halloween's coming up soon. October, my favorite time of the year. I'm a big Halloween fan, not the movie series of the holiday. But I'm a Friday 13th fan. Friday 13th fan. So what I'm going to do later on, 
because uh, the summer is still here. We still have another two. Oh shit, we have like another two days, two three days left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna do a breakdown of every single Friday the Thirteenth, every single Halloween movie, every single Nightmare on the Street, and every single Hellraiser, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You think it? I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do an episode on it, live stream it for you guys. And we're going to go, and then we're eventually going to, you know, revisit the good old Ghostbuster films, including the all-female one that no one liked. Um, and then we'll go, we'll break everything down, we'll get into it, and we'll talk about it. But thank you very much for the uh, coming to the movie club, first episode. And uh, I'll be back later on tonight, hopefully, to discuss a little Friday the 13th with you guys. You guys have a good one.